Hi guys. So today's video is going to be a book unhaul and a little bit an unhaul vlog. So I talk about all the time that we have fantastic local use bookstores where we live and my husband and I are actually going on a little bit of a trip. We're going to go up to the woods and just enjoy hiking and whatnot. And there's actually a location of one of our favorite local use bookstores up in the northern area where we're going. And so for part of our trip, we're gonna go visit this other location. I've never been to this one. So some of the books that I'm going to be mentioning, we're gonna take there. So I'll take you along with us when we do that. But in the meantime, getting to the books that we're gonna unhaul. First up, we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I recently did a whole dedicated review for this book and it's a little bit divisive when it comes to readers on booktube some people really love it some people don't like it at all i'm obviously getting rid of it so i didn't really like it the setup though for this is that we follow a girl named alex stern who's going to this prestigious school it's a dark academia setting and she is a part of a group of people who monitor and ensure that the secret societies that are on this prestigious school's campus are not abusing their magical powers that other people don't really realize are a thing and our main character has the ability to see ghosts which are called greys and it is interesting it's actually kind of a murder mystery and it's a split timeline it's got a lot of the things that lee bardugo does that are kind of gritty a little bit darker and it does a lot of the this character has a mysterious past and i'm slowly gonna tell you what that past is as the story progresses it's got the lee bardugo flavor for sure but it was a little bit of a miss for me which is okay, somebody else can get this for a cheaper price. Next up is a book that I never mentioned that I was going to be picking up because I kind of picked it up on a whim. My friend Jashana from the channel Jashana C picked this up and I was like, hey, that seems pretty good for the Halloween season and I own it, so I'll pick it up and we can buddy read it. That would be The Beautiful by Renee Adier. I'll put up the cover image since I don't know where my sleeve is at the moment, but this is a vampire story kind of it's actually more like a historical fiction book with commentary on being a woman in this time period because it is a little while back in new orleans we have a main character who is escaping her past from europe and she comes to america to start fresh and hopefully get away from whatever happened and you kind of find that out as the story goes on and there's some creepy stuff happening but i felt like the story was was more historical fiction, ah, oh, it sucks to be a lady, I have no freedoms, and everything is terrible, sort of a story, except for there's also a hunksicle of a man. I mean, both the main characters are, like, uber hot, and it's also like, is that guy a vampire? I don't know, he might be a vampire. It's not known that there are these paranormal beings, so creepy stuff is happening, and the character's like, what the heck? And I thought it was, I, I liked the writing. It was my first book by this author. I liked the writing. I'll definitely pick up something else by them. But I, uh, I just found it very melodramatic. I'm not always opposed to that, but in this story, there's a lot of subtleties when it comes to what the characters say, what they do, their mannerisms. And I found myself sometimes getting frustrated because I talked to my friend about this too. It'll be fun when she talks about it to see how she describes it. But the, the character would be standing next to the hunk school of a man and she has the hots for him and he has the hots for her and so he would like say something and she'd be like oh his tone is suggesting that he is upset but also the way he looks at me would suggest otherwise and i just can't make this man out and it was like this a whole like <laughs> two pages not really i'm exaggerating but it was it was always just everything was just like <gasps> He, f he flexes his hand like a little bit. What does it mean? And I'm just like, aren't there vampires in the story? Can we get back to like the creepy stuff? <laughs> and I think I just wanted more of that, which I have seen as kind of a complaint about this book. That doesn't mean it's a bad book. It's just not what I was wanting from it. I thought it was going to be like angsty vampire scariness and it wasn't necessarily. The next couple I have talked about a few different times, so I'm not gonna elaborate too much on these, and it would be The Devouring Grey and Wicked Saints. I'll go ahead and link the videos where I talk more in depth about these, but The Devouring Grey was actually a DNF for me. It was, it's kind of like a Stranger Things sort of set up. There's a creepy forest setting, a person moves to this small town, and everybody knows there's a creepy forest setting and that it tends to kill people, this forest, but this girl moves in. She's just like, 
it's weird here. And then scary stuff starts happening, but I wasn't that scared because the characters, they, they, they definitely handled things really well. <laughs> and then Wicked Saints, I have described many times as being a less eccentric YA version of Nevernight combined with if you ship the Darkling from the Grisha trilogy. It was uber angsty, so angsty. Oh my goodness, it's so angsty. And that's fine. I kind of wanted it to be even more angsty so I could just fully embrace that it's an angsty story. But then sometimes it'd be like, let's have conversations about abandoning our faith and questioning our faith. But also I'm going to be extra attracted to the hot guy over there who's supposed to be a heretic. And I don't know, it just like, it wasn't quite the right combo for me. Next up would be the Finnevar Tapestry Trilogy and Tagana and Sailing to Sarantium, Sarantium. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one, but oh my gosh. So I typically don't buy a bunch of books by an author if I haven't at least read a couple first to see if I like the writing style. I had every intention after picking up the book Under Heaven by this author and DNFing it to read more of their works because I thought, okay, Under Heaven is probably just not my jam. And then I looked into some of the other ones and there's like a horrific non-consensual scene in Finnevar Tapestry, like really disturbing, like ah, oh, I'm going to shapeshift into your dad right now. And then I'm going to shapeshift into all these other people that you know while I do this horrific thing to you. And I'm like, no thanks. So I'm not saying the books are bad and that, I sh and that like no one should give them a chance. Just for my comfort level, I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't know if I want. <laughs> After some of the stuff from Under Heaven, which was, I feel like, not as uh, intense as some of the other stuff and I didn't like it and I also didn't really love the writing style. I'm like, maybe it's just not for me, which is fine. So I took in all of those. The reason I had them was because I remember when I first started going to this local used bookstore, I remember there was a bookseller and he looked like a wizard, like he had a huge long beard and he was really jolly and really nice and I was like, I'll get whatever you recommend. We had store credit and he recommended a lot of this author's works to me and I was like, okay, and I got them and I'm kind of sad, but you know, it's okay. I tried another of his works and I'm just not comfortable with the other stuff. I also already took in all of the Guy Gabriel K books. So we have The Beautiful, we have Ninth House, and my husband is going to be taking in his, his uh, Blade of the Immortal series. So this is a manga series, he's read it all. He enjoyed it, but he didn't absolutely love it by the end, and he was like, ah, I just don't really know if I'm, if I see myself rereading this. So we're going to take in all of those, and we're going to see what store credit we get. Nuna Bear, are you ready to go to Bookman's? There it is. Are you ready for Bookman's? <laughs> good people we are in a hotel room and i turned in some manga i turned in blade of the immortal i didn't hate blade of the immortal but it was taking up basically an entire shelf and i thought it was time to move on so with the store credit 55 dollars store credit that we accumulated i purchased more books <laughs> jeez the republic of suffering <laughs> <laughs> next i have I Married a Communist by Philip Roth. I read American Pastoral this year, and it was one of my favorite books that I've read. So this is the follow-up to that book. I'm not crazy about the title, though, but hopefully I like it. And then I have The Savage Detectives by Roberto Bolano. Same story. I read 2666 or 2666, whatever you want to call it, by Roberto Bolano earlier in the year. And I thought it was fantastic. So, another Bolano. And wild card here. This is Europe Central by William T. Volman. Won the National Book Award. I now have two books by William T. Volman, both of them unread. So, let's hope I like it. Because if I don't, then I have two books that I don't like by an author. And lastly, The Big Boy. This is Against the Day by Thomas Pynchon. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself because I read Gravity's Rainbow this year and 
It was an experience. I've heard this one is a little bit more accessible, but it's still also giant and it's still Thomas Pynchon. Thank you for watching Sean's Corner. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>